Hello, it's John Heaton, and I thought I'd do something a bit different today and uh, look at some of my favourite movies of all time. So normally this is a music channel and I, I wouldn't normally stray too much from that, but I thought it'd be fun to just do this. A very early video on my channel was top 15 or 20 TV shows, which was kind of interesting in, for me and uh, there's a few I missed off that list or a few I've discovered since, so that probably needs to be updated perhaps at some stage, but uh, I'll take you through the top 10. This is, again, completely personal and uh, you'll discover from the list the kind of movies I'm generally into and it's no, it's no secret. Um, so we'll start off with number 10, The Odessa File from 1974. So this is based on the famous novel from Frederick Forsyth and the novel is every bit as good as the film, if not better. Um, Frederick Forsyth's first, this one and the following one were just absolutely brilliant. I think those were his first two, I'm not completely sure, but they were, I'll, the, I'll come to the other one later as you'll see, but uh, the Odessa file is <clears throat> this German in the early 60s trying to track down um, this uh, former Nazi who, who had killed his father and uh, it's really gripping. John Voigt is in the lead role here. And um, Maximilian Schell is playing the the lead German, and he he also appeared in the following years, A Bridge Too Far, as a German as well. Um, so that was that's very sus suspenseful uh, film, excellent. Topsy Turvy is next, <coughs> starring Alan Cordoner and Jim Broadbent as Sullivan and Gilbert, respectively. Uh, wrong way around should be Gilbert and Sullivan, obviously. Um, uh, Jim Broadbent playing Gilbert, Alan Cordiner playing Sullivan, and I, I'm a big Gilbert and Sullivan fan. And when this film from Mike Lee came out in '99, it was just a joy because it uh, dramatised a particular period of their relationship surrounding the aftermath of Princess Ida, uh, and then the. The, re the revival of the sorcerer and then crowning with crowning glory being the uh, the Mikado at the end of the film and I think we've got Iolanthe as well being premiered as well in here with Sullivan very ill uh, had to take some some drugs to get him even to the to the Savoy to be able to conduct the orchestra um, he was in pretty bad way but uh, really strong acting performances and good choice of music from the operas as well, uh, not just the well-known stuff, there's some stuff from the Grand Duke here which is interesting and uh, as I say good acting and really brings brings the mood of the period to life and I love it. I just want to give an honourable mention to this other Gilbert Sullivan movie, it's called The Story of Gilbert Sullivan starring Robert Morley from 1954 I think it was and this is the movie that Lennon referenced in the David Wigg interviews interview from 1971 which he'd watched as a child and which saw Gilbert and Sullivan splitting and arguing and they come back and one's in a wheelchair 20 years later and John said I, th I thought we'd never come we'll never come to that um, but anyway that was a bit of a side note we've got uh, number eight the Battle of the Bulge uh, great World War two movie from 1965 star-studded cast Henry Fonda Robert Shaw is the, the lead German here, Robert Ryan, Dana Andrews. Um, this is about the, the last German offensive of World War II through the Ardennes forest, which took the Americans by surprise. And uh, star study cast, as I said, Telly Savalas is also in here in a kind of minor role, but a really wonderful performance from him as usual. And it's one of my favorite war movies. Number seven, we've got The Omen. Uh, this is the Omen trilogy, and I've chosen the first Omen movie um, from 1976, starring Gregory Peck as Damien Thorne's father. Damien Thorne is the, the person thought to be Satan in human form, and it's a really exciting film and a superb cameo from, or more than a cameo, from Patrick Troughton, who's my favourite Doctor Who. He's, he's in here. David Warner is in here. Uh, it's just a really 
brilliant movie and it's, it's quite disturbing. I mean, the nanny who comes to look after Damien with the dogs is spooky as hell. Uh, I'm not sure, well, I'm sure she's lovely in real life, but the actress playing her, her is, uh, put, turns in a wonderful, creepy performance. Um, number six, I've chosen The Eagle Has Landed, another World War II classic starring Michael Caine. And, uh, and Jenny Agata's in here as well, Donald Sutherland, all performing wonderfully. And what's great about this film is it's actually a made-up story about a, a plot to, to assassinate Churchill and a group of Germans landed in an English village uh, posing as sort of normal workers and then get discovered halfway through and then they take over the church and there's a great siege sequence where they're holed up in this church and then they discover this escape route and then they go down this river at the end and Michael Caine shoots Churchill or he thinks he's shot Churchill but it turns out to be a double. Sorry about all the spoilers if you were planning to watch it but anyway it's quite an old movie I'm sure if, uh, a lot of you have already seen it 1976 worth checking out. Number five this is a childhood favourite Chitty Chitty Bang Bang from 1968 starring Dick Van Dyke Sally Ann Howes, Lionel Jeffries, just a wonderful family musical with uh, great songs, truly scrumptious. Uh, the song sung by Lionel Jeffries, forget what it's called, Port Out, Starboard Home. Um, and then there's a song in the Sweet Factory. And then there's, of course, the superb title tune of the movie, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And it's just a magical film. And The Child Catcher is in here, which... Uh, I was scared of as a kid and my kids when I showed this film to them were duly scared as well of the child catcher. I think it's a lot of gone through a lot of people's childhood memories of that child catcher coming with his alluring uh, cage full of ice cream to, to capture the kids. Uh, just a brilliant, brilliant, genius movie. Number four, I've got the TV movie Jesus of Nazareth, which was shown in two parts in 1977. Three hour, two three-hour parts, so in total six hours, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if it tells you exactly. 270 uh, minutes, so uh, not quite, not quite six hours. But uh, uh, it's just brilliant performance from Robert Powell as Jesus. Uh, some memorable scenes, as you would expect from uh, the memorable story that this is. Uh, probably the greatest story ever told, and. Uh, all kinds of people appear in here. Laurence Olivier is uh, playing uh, in, is, I forget which role he's playing, but it's uh, maybe Joseph of Arimathea um, uh, and Bancroft, uh, Ernest Borg, Borgnin, Claudia Cardinal. I don't recognize these names from just looking at them, but they all turn in Good performance. The Twelve Disciples are also all played by good actors, and uh, just, just so many brilliant uh, scenes in the movie, and it really works works well. Well, well cast, etc., and well produced, of course. I should mention by uh, um, Franco Zeffirelli. I think it, I think it was shown on ITV. I seem to remember at the time in the UK anyway. Um, number three, we've got The Railway Children. This is a, another childhood favourite of mine. Based on the book by E. Nesbitt of this three, these three children who have to be taken up north from London to live in a, in a, um, in a house up there near the, near the railway line because their father has been arrested, suspected of um, fraud. And they spend a few years up there and they get to know the railway and they get to know Bernard Cribbins, who's the uh, postmaster at the local station. Uh, Ian Cuthbertson, the father, by the way. Jenny Agata plays Roberta. Sally Thompson, Gary Warren. Um, Dinah Sheridan plays the mother. And there is a, an updated version of this from about 10 years ago, which is not as good. It's OK. Jenny Agata plays the mother, actually. But this is, if you want to check it out, this, this one from 1970 is the one to check out, and this is this is one of those films which is you probably don't even need to buy it if you live in the UK because it gets shown on uh, BBC most Christmases, along with a lot of some of these others on the list. Uh, get shown regularly on terrestrial TV, but uh, 
it's just just a timeless classic and there's a, a, the book is good but the film is absolutely timeless uh, number two we've got the day of the jackal this is the second Frederick Forsyth film I've chosen or based on the Frederick Forsyth book and uh, again the book is highly recommended and this film I think does it justice 1973 Edward Fox in the lead role is absolutely superb um, Alan Bedell is in here Tony Britton Cyril Cusack Michael Lonsdale Eric Porter uh, it's about it's a hypothetical story about a plan to assassinate de Gaulle and uh, he bloody nearly gets away with it it's really really exciting I just love it to bits that film and also that film originated the well one of the first times where the phrase crisis what crisis was mentioned uh, and Supertramp the band picked that phrase up from this movie and used it for their 1975 album and then The Sun used it to describe Jim Callahan being on holiday during the winter of discontent that was a, a front page headline crisis what crisis so I just thought I'd mention that little tidbit for you and then uh, topping the list is The Guns of Navarone from 1962 my favorite movie of all time my favorite war movie absolutely brilliant cast Gregory Peck again in, in the lead role here and ably supported by David Niven and Anthony Quinn in, in particular uh, it's about a group of seven people six or seven people who get sent on this near impossible mission to blow up these German guns which are situated uh, off the coast of Greece somewhere near Rhodes and those guns need to be blocked out need to be obliterated to facilitate the escape of the British uh, destroyers and uh, I won't spoil the story for you if you want to check it out it's just just an absolutely brilliant movie in the acting I love the scene between David Niven and Gregory Peck when they think they might have found a traitor in their midst again don't want to give you too many spoilers but it's just oh, I love that film I never get tired of watching it uh, so this was my top 10 I hope you enjoyed watching it. No doubt you disagree or may have your own top 10, and that's fine. This was just mine. Thanks for watching. See you next time.